the topic today is how to outsource your cold calling to work at home agents. To let you know what my background and what my experience is with outsourcing to work at home agents, it started with uh, the first company that I started after being a salesperson for 13, 14 years was called Launchpad Solutions. And Launchpad actually started out, it was actually just a cons sales consulting business that I, I went from being a salesperson, doing a lot of prospecting, getting trained by big corporate corporations on how to do how to sell and how to do prospecting and learning a lot and basically I took that and was providing that as consulting to small businesses that I had established in my local network in the in the city that I that I live in and basically I was working with small business owners and helping them to improve their strategy around cold calling now what I found after uh, doing that for some time was that yes I was helping my clients but what the, if if I would just take over the activity of cold calling for them they would hire me or my company in a second so I started looking around and I didn't really at this time my business was too small and I didn't really too small to basically build out a call center and I didn't really want to spend that money um, and I started looking around and I realized with cloud-based CRM applications with cloud-based phone systems, I can hire work-at-home agents, basically teach them what I'm kind of teaching my clients to do, and basically then I can put them on the phone and have them cold call for the clients that I'm trying to help, and everybody's happy, and then I have a, an additional service to my business, and I, my business grows, my clients don't have to worry about cold calling, and I'm providing work for some individual. So that's what I did, and uh, it was, it, it took off much better than my consulting business to be honest with you and so for a number of years I ran campaign after campaign after campaign and to be honest with you actually I learned so much with each campaign and with training each work at home agent that I started to basically get a lot of ideas around what what we were doing with creating scripts and creating templates and, and training and that's what led to basically sales scripter is that in, in creating script after script, campaign after campaign, I started to see patterns and I started to get ideas that in order to create these scripts, I'm asking a set of questions and I could create an application that has the questions that I need and when those are answered, the answers link to a library of templates and that's what that was the brainchild behind Sales Scripter and basically then I started building out out that application and these two I ran these two companies in parallel for about one a year and a half almost two years and then <clears throat> I stopped taking clients on the launch pad side and really focused primarily on the Sales Scripter side but I share that with you on the front end here because there was a lot that I learned in in training and hiring all those work at home agents and that's what I basically summarized here today for you that being said I want to start out with why it makes sense for you to outsource your cold calling and you may know this or you may feel this because you you've you're watching this here today or you've signed up for this webinar but there's a good reason why why you 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 should be here listening to me and let me let me share that. I'm a bit biased but let me just share you some some data as I see it um, you know if we if I break down the time that uh, either that you spend and I do realize there might be two different types of people here today there there might be business owners that want to outsource some of their calling to to in, to work at home agents and there might be salespeople that are in that are supposed to be doing pro prospecting and they want to offload some of that so if I if you take the time that an individual would will spend cold calling this is the way I, I see the breakdown and basically 30 percent of the time is spent on phone and CRM stuff and what I what I mean by that is this is looking up contact information navigating through a CRM maybe you know going to look up someone on LinkedIn getting a phone number, dialing the phone, sitting on hold, going through uh, an auto attendant uh, system, press one for this, two for that. Uh, and so that's all the CRM and phone stuff. And so I actually think that that takes up about 30% of a salesperson's time. Then another 30% of the time is spent emailing and voice, leaving voicemail messages or running into voicemail boxes. 
So this could be typing emails before you call someone. It could be you, someone said, hey, send me your info, and you, you spend some time set, typing up an email. You just left a voicemail message. You're typing up a follow-up voicemail message. But So 30% there. Another 30% is dealing with gatekeepers. So this is you know, you're, you're, you're calling and you have to either try to get through a gatekeeper or it's a gatekeeper that's answering your phone and, and, and whatnot. So, and then 10% of the time is actually talking to the key prospects that you want to talk to. Now, you could, you could move those numbers around a little bit. Uh, you can actually purchase different forms of technology that can decrease those those areas like you can you can use an auto dialer for your to decrease the amount of time on the phone you can do do stuff with email I might show you some stuff here that would decrease your email time today but the point is is that the bulk of your time is not spent talking to prospects the bulk of your time is sort of driving the car and moving the machine let's look at what that looks like when you start thinking about how much time that is on your week as a either business owner or salesperson. So if we keep that that breakdown the same, if you agree, if you agree with that, let's say you spend 10 hours a week cold calling. And and I think for a salesperson, I mean depending on what your territory looks like, this might be a good amount. You know, we're talking about 2 hours a day just pure phone prospecting. And if you're doing that, I mean if you work in in inside sales, you, your whole day might be cold calling. But you're probably not on this watching this if because you wouldn't want to outsource your job, your own job. But uh, if you're a sales exec or a business owner, if you're doing 10 hours a week, that's pretty good. But now that you start to think about it, you're spending three hours on the phone stuff, three hours on email and voicemail, three hours talking to Gatekeeper, and really only one hour with target prospects. You may see that in different ways. I actually see that as if you if you put on in all that effort and you're getting an hour of time with you know the people that you want to talk to, that's that's good that's probably you know th that's that's worth the effort but you got to notice that there's a lot of effort that went into getting to that that one hour and if you if you look at this from another side which maybe a lot of people can relate to this if you've ever just you know kind of if you're not doing any cold calling and you muscled out an hour you uh, of cold calling you it might be 18 minutes on all those big areas and only six minutes talking to prospects and what that usually ends up looking like is you spend an hour cold calling and you had like one or two conversations and you probably if you've ever experienced that here's what you might feel and and I say this because this is what I feel in that situation is that you feel like you're wasting your time you f you feel like you're not accomplishing anything and and whatnot but the reality is is that you are it's just that you have to do so much work to get to that six minutes. And if you did that for 10 hours a week, you'd end up with an hour, which, like I said, that's an hour of on the phone with prospects. And if you make the most out of those calls, you're, you, you can generate some leads. It's just so much work to get there. And what I refer to this as, it's a very grinding um, process. And like I said, if you're an inside salesperson, that's what you're hired to do. But if you're a sales exec, you might be able to work on larger, more strategic activities like proposals or presentations, and, and this stuff might just get in your way. In addition, if you're a sales exec, you might actually also be able to go to networking events, So, which I think networking might be one of the best ways to, to generate leads. That's not to say that we shouldn't be using the phone, but if you can, instead of spending 10 hours a week on on this stuff, have someone else do this and you're out there networking man that can really improve your results so let's look at this from a skill level standpoint because we have these big chunks of time and what's interesting is from a skill standpoint the the phone CRM stuff sending emails leaving voicemails you're talking about a very low skill level and what I mean by skill level is level of experience level of knowledge, um, you know, sales experience, whatnot. So if you're either an experienced sales exec, maybe years of experience in your industry, years of experience with the company that you work for, if you're a business owner, your time is way too valuable to be spending it on such a low skill activity, meaning it's so low skill that it's easy to delegate it. 
uh, to someone else who doesn't have all that experience. And another way to look at it is to think about what your billable rate is per hour. Uh, if you're a consultant, you might know exactly what that number is. And if your billable rate is a certain figure, then for you to spend and you know three hours on this low skill activity, it just doesn't make sense when someone of a lower skill can do that for you. So you, you look at you know six hours of or, or 60 percent is low skill and then I put the talking with gatekeepers at a medium skill it's still pretty low skill but I put it at medium because your gatekeep the gatekeepers can be feisty and give you objections so you, you kinda have to know how you, you at times need to know how to get around those or how to deal with those or how to deal with gatekeepers to be successful or to be more effective than if you didn't know how to and so I put that at a medium level although that's fairly easy to teach and to be honest with you not only is it fairly easy to teach someone who already can do the low uh, the low skill stuff I'll tell you mo a lot of experienced sales execs they're they're sharp as a knife but they don't have the key tactics for dealing with gatekeepers so meaning we can teach an outsourced work at home agent how to deal with the gatekeepers and they can do the bulk of this now what you might see there that's not circled or boxed in is the talking with prospects and I gave that a high level of skill because that you know you get a prospect on the phone you only have a lim limited amount of time let's label that as high skill and and I won't disagree with that when you see high skill there you you might think okay well that's what I need to do so how am I gonna get the other people to do this and then I do the talking with the prospects um, well the reality is is yes it's high skill but it's still something that can be outsourced and let me explain that by showing you the first step in the sales process is the initial contact and this is what you're gonna get that work at home agent to do and it's a cold call or it could be an email whatever I mean some mix of both probably is what it ends up being and that's gonna be a two to five minute phone conversation the the goal of that is to pre-qualify really the goal of that call is to schedule an appointment we're not getting into real detailed information about the product we're not getting into detailed information about the the the, uh, the company so all that knowledge that you have in your head it, it's not even really a point that can be used at this moment where that knowledge starts to come in is in the appointment so in the appointment is where you kind of spend more half of the time on the prospect and half of the time on you this is where you can qualify a little further get more information from them like I said share some more information about you and then drive towards a presentation and then that's where you might give a presentation or a proposal or a quote so the bottom two pieces of this process yes all that knowledge in your head is where that comes in and and the initial contact it's not needed meaning it's high skill yes and we, but we can teach someone and we can delegate that task and uh, and that's what I did with my appointment setting business and my work at home agents we always drew the line between those first two steps and I never would I would never go beyond that because the learning curve is it just spikes right after the appointment to get the appointment and to have the two to five minute conversation we can get someone to do that uh, fairly quickly and so the message there is is that if you know if you think about how all the the time that is spent it just makes sense for someone else to do it uh, depending on the situation you're in there are some key challenges with this it's not easy and maybe that's why you're here today but I can tell you I'm gonna show you some stuff that will make it less challenging uh, but some of the challenges that I went through with hiring work at home agents is finding a good cold caller right cold calling is not easy you know you gotta you have to be a certain type of person that is brave enough to pick up the phone communicates clearly can deal with rejection can think quickly you know I mean it's it's really it's a unique skill set so and if we're going going to hire someone we need to be able to find someone that's that's good and that can be difficult so the once you once you fire hi, once you hire someone then we have to teach them what to say right so you have all this knowledge in your head you've been doing what you've been doing for a while and now think you're gonna hire someone who has zero knowledge about your product your industry or whatever and you're gonna put them on the phone and so that 
getting them to know what to say in all those different situations is difficult or challenging. Okay, so we're hiring someone that works at home. We're never going to see them. How are we going to know they're working? I mean, if we if we hire them to work 10 hours a week, you know, we want them working 10 hours a week. You know, so how are we going to make sure that they're productive when they're virtual? We want them to get results. So, yes, we want them working the 10 hours, but if they don't get results and they, they work, you know, 110%, then that doesn't get us a return on our investment, so that doesn't mean anything. So we need them, them to also get them to also be be effective. We need to minimize turnover. So if you're looking to do if you're looking to do this, you're probably not looking to do it for one week. So let's just assume you're looking to do this indefinitely or for a while or whatever. And so the last thing you want to do is hire someone and spend your time training them getting them ramped up and then they only work for you for a short period of time going back to my experience I did have people that I would interview and they just sounded great and I would I would talk them out of the position I would say this is not fun it's not easy but you'll 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 make this amount of money and you know and and I have this job for you I, they would say yes this is exactly what I'm looking for you know I, I would hire people and then I would spend hours teaching them about the systems and the script and whatnot and then they would work I mean I I had people that would work an hour and then they would just disappear and that's the thing about work at home agents is they can just stop they can just disappear and stop answering your phone and and responding to your email so that's a worst case scenario and I'm going to show you some stuff here that can avoid that situation. And then the best case is that they work for you for a while. You know, and once they get going and they become sort of on autopilot, it's like um, you know, it it it's great. And so it's it's just like with any business, um turnover is painful, uh, especially when it happens too quickly. So related to the turnover and the training and whatnot, you want to protect your time. Not only do you want to minimize turnover so you're not having to you know, hot train people again and again, but you just don't want to spend so much of your time with this individual. I mean, think about it. If you're hiring someone to work 10 hours a week to do cold calling for you, well, you don't want to spend 10 hours a week managing them, getting them set up, you know, because then you could have just spent that on cold calling, uh, even knowing you might probably rather deal with this stuff than do the cold calling, you know, every, because people, uh, most people don't enjoy cold calling. But either way, we want to protect your time. I mean, that's really the goal. We want you to spend as little time hiring somebody and getting them going. And so the I through my trial and error and years of doing this, I basically, it was my goal to mitigate these challenges. So what we'll do is we'll, in terms of finding a good caller, I'll give you some tips on posting jobs and interviewing teaching them what to say. I'll talk a little bit about uh, creating a sales playbook, making sure they work. I'm going to show you some tools that you can use to manage and optimize productivity, um, getting them to produce results. I'll talk a little bit about sales methodology and uh, minimizing turnover. We'll talk a little bit about compensation and managing them and then protecting your time, sort of automation and onboarding. So this is basically our agenda here today for our time together. So let jumping right in so talking about finding a good caller there's a few different places to to post your job listing if you aren't already using some sort of job board or um, I don't know whether you have something on your company website a lot of these work at home people um, a good place these are good places to reach them you know so it might be better to post your job in these areas than on your company website or other other places but I would post jobs on Craigslist and I if if I posted a work at home telesales job <clears throat> on Craigslist I would probably get about a hundred resumes a, a little bit into my experience with hiring work at home agents I came across a work at home mom website so it's WHAM.com and there's a forum on there that you can post jobs in uh, actually free so it was pretty nice and I would probably get I don't know maybe 25 or 30 uh, resumes from that. You can also find contract and, and work at home people on Odesk. I don't know whether you're familiar with that. So those are some places that you can post your job. You do have the option when you're when you're hiring a virtual person, 
you could do offshore or domestic, meaning U.S. I mean, I'm based in the U.S., and so when I say domestic, I'm referring to the U.S., but primarily with my business, I only, uh, I only really use domestic resources. I dabbled a little bit with offshore. The, the good thing about offshore, uh, meaning, you know, international, is the cost savings. So you can pay any, as little as two to five dollars per hour. So if you like a lot of times I would have salespeople that would try to hire my company to do their cold calling and I would always direct them I, go hire someone from the Philippines. You know if you're paying out of your your paycheck to hire someone to do cold calling you know which is a more limited budget than hiring someone out of a company payroll or, or sales and marketing budget um, you know, th this is what I would recommend probably is, you know, offshoring. <clears throat> the challenges with that is the phone, phone quality, you know, could sometimes be a challenge, although voice over IP is, has gotten so, it, so good that, um, I mean, I get calls all the time from, I can tell it's the Philippines or, or overseas because of the accent, but I can't tell because of the phone quality, but, you know, sometimes you get phone issues. Uh, but th I think it, the accent is is a concern. I think the Philippines kind of has the least accent. It they, they they speak very they speak English very well, um, and but sometimes you could have some cultural differences, but those aren't major. Uh, domestic is just more expensive, but you should probably get better quality. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, there's a lot of bad. You'll get a lot of resumes from people that you would never want representing your company I mean you know that's that's with hiring anything right I mean you just sort of have there's there's a lot of people out there that don't fit that will apply for a job that don't fit well not to say anything about them and what they would be qualified for but you'll just get a lot of resumes for people that don't fit well with what you're trying to to hire um, and that that happens on both but um, but I found overall the quality of work was uh, for this type of job was better uh, from the US but you know Try try either if you if you want. Now this is a slide that you might glaze over, you might tune out because maybe you're not there yet. But this is actually something that transformed my operation when I was hiring work at home agents. So um, so it's really important and uh, it, it, to take into consideration in, in my opinion. But before I go through these steps, let me just explain to you. When let, I told you when I post a job on Craigslist, there would be I would get a hundred resumes. Now, I'm at, let's at this point, regardless of your role in a company, whether you're a business owner, or a salesperson, or whatever, let's just assume you're, you're you're extremely busy, right? We're all busy. We have stuff to do. So you, now you're looking at a hundred resumes, and so now you you start to go through the resumes, and you're like you're flipping through them, looking for someone that looks good. You see some experience that looks good. You give them a call. You leave them a voicemail. You play phone tag. They end up calling you back, and you hear their voice, and you're like, "Oh, I would never, I, I, I would never want this person making calls for me." Or you know, it. There's just all this back and forth, and you're only you're moving very slowly, right? Because you're looking at all these resumes, and you're calling these people one at a time. So what I did is, in talking with someone, I got this idea to basically set up to automate the first step of the the interview process and w what I basically did is I used I used actually a, a different recording system but you you could use what I'm showing you here which is to use a voicemail box so what you will do is you'll set up a, a dedicated phone number in in this um, there's some different ways to do this but basically you set up a phone number that goes to a voicemail box and when you get those hundred resumes at for every resume that you get, you're going to, uh, so step one is to set up the voicemail box dedicated for this job position. In the greeting, you could maybe share a, an explanation of the job position, or you could share, you could say a couple questions for them to answer in the greeting to the voicemail box. Step two is post your job. Step three is you're going to receive, let's say you receive a hundred resumes from applicants. Now, you're going to, going to reply to every email you get. You don't even look at the resume because that's wasting time. Don't even look at the resume. To every email you get, you copy and paste a message that says, thanks for applying. The first step in our interview process is to dial this number and answer these two questions on this 
in on in the in this recording the voicemail box or on the recording and then and so what's going to happen is let's say you get a hundred resumes and you send out a hundred emails I can tell you right now only fifth only thirty people out of the hundred are going to call your voicemail box something like that so right away you've eliminated 70 people because even knowing some of those 70 people might have had good resumes they did not follow your 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 first instruction to give them so if they can't follow this instruction that's a great screening process so right away you've screened people out now out of out of the phone system that I used I could tell when people hung up um, so like <clears throat> I don't know what on some voicemail boxes you won't get the hang-ups but um, on my system I could get the I got the actual hang-ups and the reason why I'm telling you that is because out of the 30 people that actually call the system only half of those actually go through the and answer the answer the questions so let's say that now out of the 30 only 15 people actually answer the questions and out of those 15 <clears throat> regardless of their answers the great thing about cold calling and interviewing for this is the voice is uh, tells a lot and so right away out of the 15 recordings that you can listen to in a matter of what I don't know a very short period of time 20 minutes listen to 15 recordings um, you can immediately filter those down to the seven people that you want that you would want to talk to and then you can set those appoint those interviews with those seven people I know I'm kind of going into detail on that process but the key thing here is that you're able to get to the the right people instead of with the other process you end up hiring someone that you're taking more of a guess on without really going and because you don't want to hot you want you want you don't want to continue to go through these resumes and make these calls the first person that you hear that sounds decent you end up hiring them and that's where you end up uh, with um, that's where you end up with people that the higher level of turnover so what this did is this allowed me to hire a lot better higher quality people and decrease a lot more time training and, and, and dealing with turnover so just some tips there the next thing is we need to t teach them what to say right we have all this knowledge in our head and so we're gonna put them on the phone they're cold calling to get meetings for us or, or for some, we're outsourcing our cold calling to them, so we need to have them saying the right stuff. So I, I believe in giving my callers a, a sales playbook. By the way, in my, when I was a salesperson, I, I, working for big corporations, they never told me what to say. You know, they, they, I rarely got any scripts, and I know there's a lot of companies out there that don't believe in scripts, but the words that a salesperson uses is their best sales tool you know a, a lot of people think of sales tools as you know an email tool or a, a, a website or voicemail or whatever they think of all these different sales tools the words that come out of your mouth or the words that go into an email are you is, is your most important sales tool so why get that wrong why why either just imp, you know hire anybody whether they're a full-time person or a work at home person why hire anybody and just hope that th they take what you give them, uh, what you tell them about your product, and that they figure out what to say with their own sort of style. So I basically would give my callers a playbook. And the playbook would have a call script, voicemail script, email templates, and objection responses. By the way, I would also tell them, hey, here's your playbook. And I'm not saying that you need to read from all these documents word for word and I don't want you to be a robot and you know use these as a guide use these as a guide and you can use your own personality style you can divert from them from you know here and there whatever but use them as a guide for what to ask and what to say and 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 I, I would tell them I would say you know if you want to do your own thing and 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 you you don't want to follow this structure and you want to kind of totally do your own thing I would tell them go for it yeah but if you don't get results then the fingers pointed at you if you follow this playbook and you don't get results and you're doing what everything I tell you to then the fingers pointed at me so it's your choice the the good thing that I'm about what I'm showing you here today is if you want to do this and do this on your own you're gonna have some challenges the nice thing about what I can do for you is I've gone through a lot of these processes so I have a lot of these pieces in place 
that you can leverage. And one of those is Sales Scripter. And so like I said, this piece of software comes from me hiring and training cold callers, the people that you might think about doing. And so just to kind of just do show you a couple pieces of this as we go, as it's relevant. So basically Sales Scripter um, will, will allow you to create your script and your playbook for your for the person that you want to outsource to and so this is actually my account but you can basically create a campaign so let's say you you want to hire someone to schedule appointments calling hospitals selling one of your particular products well then that might be a particular campaign and you can go through our tool here to basically create that campaign uh, now you might say I, I have a script already or maybe you don't there's a good there's there is a possibility that even if you have a script already we might basically we might help you to think about things in a different way and we might help you to think of pain points and benefits and questions that you wouldn't have thought of before so out on the top of outsourcing cold calling we might help you to build a better script but getting to the playbook this piece right here of sales scripter is basically the playbook this is what you know, when I had Launchpad and I was hiring work at home agents, I would just give them a set of Word documents. But now, this is all here in a web based application. So here's a call script. Here is basically, let me just close this. Here is uh, a call script. So, like I said, when with my work at home agents, they would be looking at this in a Word document. For you, if you wanted to use this, here is you know basically a, a call script and like I said this can be a guide for what to say and ask for your salesperson in sales scripter they also have a different view that they can look at that this is that exact same document but it's just kind of more in a in a you know what to say next and, and navigating the call um, also I mentioned that the um, we're your playbook should include objection responses. When I was a salesperson, my sales managers never talked to me about objections. You know, I would just sort of try to figure out what to say whenever something came up. But you know what? The same objections come up again and again. And so Sales Scripter will actually give you uh, a lot of the standard objections that you'll come across and, and different uh, responses that, that can be said to those objections. If I go back to this interactive script, those objections are also displayed in that same view. So when you, you're talking about if you are hiring a work at home agent and you want to, to eat, make it easy for you to teach them what to say and you want to make it easy for them to know what to say when they're on making calls, man, here you go. You know, you, you, it's all right here. You know, I mean, you have to do a little bit of explanation, a little bit of training, but bam, it's all right there. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, so here are all the, the bunch, a few different uh, call scripts and whatnot that your work at home agent can use. If you're doing B2B selling, then your work at home agent should be empowered to, to do send emails. So they can send emails through uh, or they can access a bunch of emails directly here in Sales Scripter. So again, this is part of your playbook. Okay, creating email templates is good for you not only because you're probably a better person to write an email than than your the your work at home agent is not only are you the better person to basically create the right emails but you don't want your work at home agent typing emails in between calls so that's the really great thing about these email templates and i realized this when i was a salesperson that i'm sending the same emails again and again it's hey i'm trying to get a hold of you hey i just left you a voicemail hey you asked me to send you some information. They're all these same situations when you're cold calling. So here are all these email templates. Now, you you, you can use Sales Scripter to actually send these emails directly from uh, Sales Scripter. So you're, you could basically load up, create an email account for your work at home agent, load up their credentials into Sales Scripter, and then they can send these directly from here. Um, a couple reasons why you might want to do that is, one is you can actually see opens and clicks when people uh, to send out of here. Another reason that you might want to send emails from here for your work at home agent is because we create these things called email threads, which basically are uh, multiple emails stitched together. And so you can actually send all of these and automate the delivery of all of them. 
So I'm going to actually move quicker because we're ru I'm probably running a little bit long on time. Uh, I apologize. Um, but so there's also voicemail scripts. So again, one last thing that you have to uh, teach a work at home agent. So it's all right here, everything you need. Now let me get back to the slides because <clears throat> that's the sales playbook. So now moving on to kind of some of the tools that, that you can use. If you're hiring a work at home agent, the thorough way to do it would be for you to set up. Okay, let me actually let me back up. The, the haphazard way to do it, the just thrown together way to do it would be for them to use Skype or to use some sort of phone system that they have access to and that they're paying for. The, the proper way to do it would be for you to purchase a, 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 a line for them, a voice over IP line that you basically control and have ownership of and then you give them in this image here, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but that's actually the image there is a soft phone. And so the neat thing about voice over IP technology is now if you don't have to, you know, have someone use their home phone or buy them a desk phone, they download the software and they configure it to your settings. And then they're making phone calls like as if they work in the office sitting next to you. And um, I've used a few different phone systems with my company. Uh, when I was doing this business and Ring Central has been the best one. The phone quality is great, the user experience of using the system is really good and so that's the one I would recommend. Uh, you can so the nice thing about the phone system is you can get a call log that shows uh, you know all the calls they've made. So when it comes to managing productivity the nice thing about uh, the outsourcing this to a work, a work at home agent versus maybe something like accounting or creative is that they're when they're make when they're productive they're making calls if they're not making calls they're not productive so it's real easy to look at a call log and see how productive someone's being so that's the nice thing about knowing when they're working um, and then some of the different packages you can get call recording so you could actually hear all the conversations that are going on so that's ring central you, I would also recommend you use some sort of CRM. I know a lot of people hire work at home agents that, and they just give them a spreadsheet of people to call. You know, you have to make multiple passes to, to get a hold of someone. So if you really want a work at home agent to be successful, get them a CRM and, and teach them or get them to, you know, schedule reminders and, and so that they're calling these people back. Cause you have to call someone back a million times before you get a hold of them. So the, the the most popular free CRM out there that I, I think is a, that I'm familiar with is Zoho. So you might want to check that out if you're not familiar. Uh, one that a free CRM that I've really liked, is, and I, I don't think it's as well known, is Insightly. I just I, I think the experience is really good there. Of course, if you're talking about CRM, you want to be extremely thorough. You know, Salesforce is one that no one would ever get fired over purchasing. In addition, with whatever CRM you might use, I've always used Google Docs with people, contractors, or people that I've hired, or even employees. So you probably use some sort of form of Google Docs. Although, I do want to show you, uh, if you do use Sales Scripter for your sales playbook, we also do have a CRM as well. And so just to show you that a little bit of that real quick, I'm not going to go into too much detail. But we do have a full CRM. I mean, you know, it allows you to, to create tasks and, you know, follow up reminders and, you know, load up contacts and accounts. Pretty standard stuff. I will say that, um, you know, we do have some unique features that make this, what I think, better than the other CRMs that I showed you. I will, I will just be honest, though, that our customers don't come to us to use our CRM. Our customers come to us for our sales playbook stuff and then they end up using our CRM. So, you know, I mean, that might change down the road, but um, but I there are some ways that our CRM is, is better. And so one of the ways is there's this column over here called quality points. I mentioned to you that when someone opens or clicks your email, you get notified. Well, we give those contacts points diff for different things they do. So you can see who's more qualified than the other by seeing who has the most points. So that can allow you to do more effective lead scoring. Um, another thing is that we uh, provide this feature here that allows you to log an interaction. And this allows you, so you, you could basically 
have this as the central place that your caller comes to to get their to get their scripts to make their calls to send their emails but then this is also the central place that they log and and have that you load up their contacts and that they log their calls so you can log a call you can set this up or instruct your caller to basically log every call that they make which is the way I would do it and uh, they can also log other stuff, but the main thing that they're going to be doing is logging emails and calls. But so if I log this call, you can basically real quickly go through here and say what happened on the call. And let me just show you. So you can also log the objections that can come up. And so for each of these things, there's a couple things here. One is you're, a you're able to extract the key things that happened on the call very quickly without typing anything, although you can add notes if you, you don't see something that fits. And then for each thing that's being selected, we're giving that contact quality points, which allow you to see who which prospect is more qualified, like I mentioned to you. But we're also a, a, a accruing pursuit points for that for the salesperson. So you can see how hard the salesperson's working by the points they're accruing. But when you save this, then basically that gets logged as uh, as an as an activity and you can basically see very accurately what is all going on so that's just one feature that's unique to our system and um, there's a few others but I'll save that for another day timekeeping one tool that I've used that I've, I've liked the best I've used a couple different ones for timekeeping but just for hiring a work at home agent I use time doctor which is basically it provides like a punch in punch out feature for your worker and it the great thing about time doctor is it also provides screen capture software so what it does is when they're clocked in it's going to take a picture of their screen throughout you know every few seconds so you can see what they're working on so again real easy to manage the productivity of a work at home a work at home agent moving on sales methodology so what I would recommend you do, whether you use any of our stuff or not, you want to teach them what to say to ask. One thing, like I told you, I would teach them how to deal with some of the the, uh, the objections that you can that they can anticipate. Um, I would I would teach them how to be a little bit prepared to get around gatekeepers. Teach them good questions to ask. I believe the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. Uh, I would teach them to really not sell the product, but really focus on how to schedule the appointment. I mean, sometimes you can schedule appointments for someone who is not necessarily ready to buy or thinks that they're interested. You basically find a reason through finding pain uh, points to, uh, to find a reason to schedule the appointment. How to use email and voicemail correctly using some sort of call cadence to get a hold of people. It's really hard to get a hold of people when you're cold calling. So using some sort of methodology there. Now the nice thing is about, so I had to figure all that out when I was running my business. By the way, our cold calling operation was a great incubator to learn new things or test new things. And a lot of what we teach comes from that operation. Our full sales methodology is actually on YouTube and it's all out here for free. So this is a playlist called smart sales training program sales system training program and there are 25 videos here so if you want to train your cold caller work at home agent to be an awesome cold caller here you go you know and you could have them watch watch a video one per day or something uh, these videos are also displayed in sales scripter so again like if you had them in here working uh, it's right here see smart sales training so here you have a four, they're broken down into four weeks. So you have these four week tabs and on each tab is a list of videos. So you could have them come here to get their sales training. So this, again, what we're talking about here is getting them to produce the results, right? So this is about getting them to be effective. It, if they make a hundred calls a day, but they aren't doing the right thing, then that doesn't do us any good. So um, we're here to help and, and like I said, you could purchase an absolutely nothing from us, but I, I'm and use our methodology videos. There's there are companies out there that I know of that are using this in their sales training that have never paid a dime with us, and and I'm fine with that. I mean, at some point, if if you think our videos and training is so great, you know, you're probably going to reach a point where it makes sense for you to to check out some of our other services. So minimizing turnover, like I said, you're. Uh, like if you're just hiring someone to call down a quick list you might not care too much about turnover although you probably should even in that case 
But if you're really looking at doing this right or doing this, you know, sort of indefinitely or from time to time, then you just don't want to be hiring people again and again and going through all that trouble. So what I try to do is I try to pay people fairly well. So when I interviewed people, it, I told you I did like an automated recording, recorded interview. And the system that I used, I could add like ask like six questions. And one of those questions was, how much would you like to be paid for the job that I've described? And I think the most common answer was like eight or nine dollars. It was pretty low. I was surprised. Um, I never paid that though. I, I started people at twelve, thirteen dollars an hour and pretty quickly if they stayed with me for if I could tell that they weren't going to flake right away I would get them to fifteen pretty quickly. So I try to pay people well. I mean it, it's tough work and, and and once someone's up and trained and doing the work I just don't want to hire someone again. So I paid people well. I try to give them a, a, a bonus whenever they generate a lead and <clears throat> this can vary depending on the product that you sell like sometimes like some some of the campaigns we would do the the uh, the appointments would be very there would be a lot of appointments per campaign and then some campaigns there would be less appointments not because that we were doing a less of good of a job but if you it, like if you're calling let's say fortune 100 or fortune 500 companies at a C level you're it's going to take you a while to get those appointments or if you call small businesses and you're calling business owners you might get more appointments cuz it's easier to get in so where i'm going with that is that to figure out the num the amount of bonus for your caller you want you need to kind of think about how difficult it is for them to get the appointment uh, but I would usually do between twenty to fifty dollars. Uh, Ten ninety nine versus W two. To to do this properly, you want to have some sort of employment um, paperwork from them. And uh, Ten ninety nine is basically an independent contractor, and W two is an employee. I, I've researched this subject. I will say I'm not an expert in um, employment uh, legal uh, terms or policies or rules but I have researched 1099 which is basically in independent contractor and if you like if you hire someone to do a job and they do it on their own equipment they do it on their own schedule and they do it without instruction they can be a 1099 and so um, for the most for the most part using these work at home agents they meet most of that um, with my agents there's a there's a little bit of the training that might be in the gray area because I'm giving them a little bit of training and instruction, but I'm not really giving them that day to day you know management and schedule and whatnot. So it's kind of a gray area. You could probably get by with 1099 um, if you want to cover all bases and you want to work with someone long term or do it right. W two uh, employee status might be the right way. I would I typically typically hire people part time because I didn't want someone. Uh, working 40 hours a week because it's such grinding work. Um, I typically hired people to work between 10 to 20 hours a week and I felt like that worked best for me. A few management tips and this again our goal is to minimize turnover uh, although with management it's also to get results but some tips regarding um, not pushing someone out the door never lose sight that cold calling is difficult you know and I think it's very easy in this in this area for people to be like where are the leads where are the leads you know you're not doing you know to be real critical and pushy and try to push someone to push someone to to draw to reach their results and so I think that you always need to keep in mind that cold calling is extremely difficult it's very mentally taxing it's very it's it's a tough tough deal and so keeping that in mind with how you manage your your caller and um, is is helpful so that can allow you to be more understanding or more sympathetic or more um, communicate with them in a way that makes them more comfortable but um, the one thing that I always did is again you hear people that uh, manage cold callers and it's all about how many leads did you generate today where are the leads where are the leads how many appointments did you schedule and so I'm real big on I'm going to focus on the inputs versus the output. So the inputs, the inputs are how many dials are they making? How many dials per hour? Uh, are they following the script? 
Are they dealing with objections correctly? What objections are they getting shot down by? Are they following are they following the game plan? And so I harp on those instead of saying where are the leads because I believe if I've given them the right sort of direction and if they work hard and follow my direction then the leads will happen. So um, that's always that's just sort of what I always did and then um, and I think that creates a healthier environment and it provides more clarity and direction for that caller in a very challenging uh, environment. And then just using the carrot more than the stick, you know, you, hey, you did great. I like how you handled that situation. But not only not only uh, monetary rewards, but also uh, words of encouragement and recognition. Uh, I think reporting is really important. So I would always give my callers a, a weekly scorecard. And, you know, some just you could put a, a lot of different things on their scorecard. But some of the key things that I always put was the total hours they worked and that broken up by calling hours and then non-calling hours, how many dials they made. And so you can just basically take the call hours, uh, the dials divided by the call hours, and that will give you the dials per hour, how many leads they produced. <clears throat> I think this is really important, you know, for uh, the reporting to the caller is important on it for a number of reasons. It gives them visibility on how uh, how hard, how good of a job they're doing, how hard they're working. It get, makes them more accountable. Um, you can use this report and the the one that I show that is an example here. You can see a trend if their their call dials per hour is starting to go down or whatnot. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, I mean, if you want to you know be very involved, uh, I would recommend coaching weekly. I think coaching weekly is better than like micromanagement coaching where you might do it every day or throughout the day and you know you, you might you know coach them between calls it could just be overwhelming too much it makes the caller uncomfortable I like to just sort of set a caller free let them do their thing let them work through the instruction that I've given them up, up until that point and then um, and then after the week they um, I'm sorry, on the, the first day of the next week, then we can review, give them a couple things to work on. A key thing that I like to focus on when coaching is objections. So what objections are you running into? Um, you know, one of the neat things about Sales Scripter is that uh, it provides, the, we, I showed you how we logged a, um, logged, a, logged a call and we were able to log the objections that came up on that call. Well, Sales Scripter will actually keep track of all those the objections that are coming up so if you have your caller logging all of your objections all of their objections then you can very easily on when you're doing coaching come to this screen and see you know what objections are running into and talk about those with them you know when that comes up you know what are you saying you know do you, do you feel like that's working well do we need to work on a better response so this tool can make your sales coaching a lot easier when especially referring to objections Protecting your time, like I said, we don't want you to spend 10 hours a week managing someone who's doing 10 hours of work for you. So you want to automate as much as possible. Um, I gave you that example of how to automate the very front end of your interview process. That should save you a lot of time. Uh, I, If you're having to deliver some sort of training, I would record that training and then so then if you're if you have to replace that person you don't have to deliver that training again and again and again there's a lot of tools you can use to record yourself record some slides now the nice thing here is is you can use a lot of our training videos you know so you might have a lot of that covered out of the box voila you have a bunch of tra sales training you might also have some product training stuff that you want to record maybe a a 30 minute product overview training uh, I would for your for what they're calling about you might want to record that so another thing with onboarding I like to make my callers go through hoops just a, an example of that is that interview process right I told you that I make them call into the system and that filters out a bunch of people and then I, I make them do this and then I send them the, the some paperwork and so you're always giving them this thing to do and that way by time you get to a point where you have to start investing your time in them and and teaching them then they've gone through a lot of hoops so you know that they're the more hoops they go through the less likely they are to flake either uh, intentionally or you filtered out the people who are more flakeable or flaky 
flaky. Um, so uh, make them go through hoops. You want to spoon feed them information. So you instead of hitting them with a fire hose, give them a little bit of information every week. You'll notice I said my the training videos that I showed you is a four week program. It's done like that on purpose. I mean, someone could watch all those videos in two days, but spread out that information over a period of time so that it, it gets absorbed. Um, try to have some sort of contractor employment uh, employee agreement in place. So a one or two page document that says this is what they're going to be paid. This is how many hours they're going to work. This is you know what you're you know what you're uh, liable for or whatever. Um, and then regarding hiring people like this, I like to think of it as spinning plates. So the, the, from a metaphor standpoint, so. If you, if you think about somebody at a circus or whatever where they have 10 or however many plates spinning on sticks, right? They don't sit there and watch the, each plate. They can't watch each plate, you know? So they, they spin a plate and then they focus on something else and then they sp get that plate spinning and then when the plate is slowing down, then they come back and spin it again. And it's that way that allows you to get lots of plates spinning. And so think of these collars as one of those plates because you have a lot of other things that thing, other things to do. So don't sit there and block out three days of your your time to work with this caller to get them cold calling. You want to get them get them watching this set of videos and then you go do what you need to do. When they're done with that, then they come back to you. Now work on this, okay? Then you, you spin the plate again. Um, and once you get them calling, it's here, work on this short list and make these calls and then we'll do some coaching when you're done with that, you know, so um, that's pretty much it. But, you know, one thing I want to leave, you know, want you to think about is when not to outsource. And so a key, a key thing that I noticed when people would try to hire us is they would try to hire us to do cold calling because they did not want to do cold calling. And there's a difference between being someone who is too busy and needs to do more phone work and just can't get to it versus someone who could probably squeeze in a few hours here and there and doesn't have a lot going on. Like let's say you have a startup business and you don't have any customers or any leads, you know, you have a full you have wide open calendar. Don't outsource your cold calling because you have you have nothing else to do. You know, if you get busy unless you could go do networking or something, but unless you're you're full, um, then you should be doing your calling yourself and um, the, then the next thing is is that if your if your budget is extremely small, do it yourself or don't do it because uh, cold calling takes a while. You know, you, you if you looked at the breakdown, you know if you're if you're working ten hours and you're talking to an hour of an hour of the ten hours you're talking to prospects, you know it's going to take a few weeks to get those leads going. You know, so um, uh, you know <clears throat> look at your budget and say if I'm going to hire someone. You know, and don't be, don't have a budget so that day two you're like stressing because your caller hasn't produced any results. You know, if that's the place you're going to be, you're either going to drive yourself crazy, drunk, going to drive your employee crazy so they quit, and you're going to lose your money. You know, it, ha it has to be like a situation where you have a budget to where you can weather the storm because it might start slow and then there might be a pop. And there might be a lull, and you just need to be able to realize that the re if you get leads from it, it'll justify your investment, and that you have that investment to make. And if you lose that investment, you're not going to not be able to pay your bills uh, at the end of the month. So some things to think about there. Um, that's pretty much it. So a, a few details on us, and I'll, I'm pretty running over here, so I'm going to move quickly. Um, we provide the SMART sales system. So SMART stands for sales messaging and response tactics. So our methodology basically focuses on teaching you or your salespeople what to say and ask and, and use that most powerful sales tool of the, their words. Also, there's other stuff in there in terms of how to you know, use email and voicemail and how to deal with objections and how to, how to do a call cadence. But our methodology, again, is, you can access it on YouTube. You can access it in our eBooks. A paperback book that I have. Um, you can uh, access it through our sales training. If you like our methodology, you might benefit from using our software, which is uh, basically uh, an application that will build your pitch, give you a library of scripts, 
provide email functionality, email automation, CRM functionality. Um, the third leg of what we do, we offer sales consulting. So we'll, we'll work with you to build your pitch, build out your sales processes, uh, help you to, to look at the scripts that you currently have, provide one-on-one -on -one sales coaching for 